Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing thing Base Sky Country Book 2. Yeah. So I don't know. So I don't know if this will end well for Dallas because da we're going to the same city where Dallas is, where Dallas got I don't know something. We'll find out in this. Well, it wasn't the last book, but you know what I mean. Let's begin the book. Three, two, one, zero. You're setting off on a road trip to Oklahoma where Dallas is wanted for armed robbery. Of course. Will you find a way to clear his name? Hopefully. It's the only way. Oh, Big Sky Country 2, Chapter 6, Life is a Highway. Mm -hmm. I can't that song. It's the morning of your big road trip to Oklahoma. You fold the last of your clothes for the trip and fit them neatly in your suitcase. Can't believe that the trip is already here. Sawyer wins the rodeo. Dallas' mom's okay. And that he doesn't have any trouble checking in on her. Your thoughts start down on a dangerous path, but you shake yourself out of it. I have to stay positive for Dallas. Now I just need to decide what to wear for our big road trip. You never know what will happen on a cross-country adventure, so I'll definitely want to look my best. You unlocked an outfit. What do you think, Wilbert? Re. At least he's not talking to the plant this time. I agree. Comfortable and cute. You scoop him up as you head downstairs. At least we're not talking to a cactus. Dallas and Sawyer are waiting for you by the car. You look real nice, Anthony. Yeah, you make road trips look good. Thanks, fellas. Cliff emerges from the house behind you. Y'all got everything? Yep. Take care of yourself while we're gone, okay? Duke, Duke and Brooklyn are staying in the house with me while you're gone. So you just focus on winning that trophy. Oh, great. I have to go with these two. That means... Uh, <laughs> you raise Wilbur until you're nose to nose. You're going to keep Grandpa... Uh, you could keep Grandpa Cliff company for a few days, okay, Wilbert? So be on your best behavior. He kisses his wet nose and pass him to Cliff. He'll mid tucks him under an arm with a bro smile. Now drive safe, you hear? We will, Dad. Sawyer climbs into the driver's seat and Dallas takes a seat in the back. Ugh, this is so lame. This is so lame! I don't want to do this at all. Just give me a seat. <sighs> Why couldn't Juliet come on this, please? Why couldn't Juliet come on this? Uh, make yourself comfortable. Slide into the back and you, and then keep going until you're right up against Dallas. What are you doing? Getting comfortable. So, Wyoming first? That's right. Like Colorado... Kansas, and finally Oklahoma. <sighs> this is... Are you excited to see your mom again? Yeah, I wish the circumstances were better, but I'm real excited. Have you heard from the hospital again? Nah, I don't want to risk calling. Figure I'll just, he just head to the house and call from there. You nod and the three of you settle into a comfortable silence as Montana carols by. Into Wyoming. You know what's missing? This oh, What's this road trip's missing? Music. The country pop. Because we're in country, so... Yeah, perfect. Close your eyes as the latest hit from a young country star pops... Pumps through the speakers. 
Your phone buzzes in your pocket with an incoming call. Hello? Anthony, I'm looking for the keys to... He's looking for the keys to one of the tractors. I asked Dad, but he said I had to call you. I left them in the cabinet in the barn. Was that wrong? Oh, there they are. All good. Safe travels. Duke ends the call. You raise your an eyebrow and shrug it off. Who's that? Your brother. Just Duke. He wanted to know where the tractor keys were. Don't know why Cliff told him to call me, though. You sail back and close your eyes and as the broad plains of Wyoming give way. To Colorado. You must have some idea of what you what do you want to do with your life, Dallas? What use what use what use is planning when the when you know you know you might have to run again at the, at any second. You shouldn't have to run. Anyone believe even you could be guilty of a crime is an idiot. That's right. We should be figuring out how to clear your name. Nah, I don't want to cause a fuss. I'm just here to see Mama. Cheer on Sawyer and stay out of jail. Well, let us know if you change your mind. You could have a bright future, Dallas. Heck, I could see you running your own ranch someday. Me? Absolutely. Don't think we haven't noticed how you've Stepped up while I've focused. While I've been focusing on this rodeo. Thanks, man. That means a lot. Sawyer so glances in this rearview mirror and returns Dallas' smile. An easy silence falls over the car until you stretch and yawn. Are we there yet? We're almost to Kansas. We'll spend the night and then head to Tulsa tomorrow morning. Spend the night. Oh, please don't give me the option. Please don't give me the option. Please don't give me the option. Good, because I am so ready to not be in a car. The hour is full by. Finally, you cross the state line into Kansas. Did that sign just say, Home of the World's Largest Ball of Twine? You pull up, to, up at the road stop an hour later. This just looks like a biker bar. That's because it is. Do you see the bikes? Science says the twine is out back. Let's take a closer look. You stretch as you climb out of the car, slipping your phone out of your pocket to take a picture. And find a new voicemail. You press the phone press the phone to your ear, listening to the message. Anthony, it's me. One of the cows won't let me milk her. I tried to get Grandpa to help, but he said to call you instead. What? This is an emergency. She almost knocked me into a pile of poop. Call me back, okay? Another call? Yeah, Brooklyn this time. She's having a cow about a cow. Aren't we all? You text back and reply. I don't know why they keep calling me, though. Cliff knows his way around the, around the ranch better than I do. I don't pretend to know how my family thinks. Now, come on. We've got a bo big ball of twine calling our names. You walk to the shed housing the twine and stir up at the towering ball. Dear Lord, it's... Lord, that's big. Though there was one of these in Minnesota. An older woman manning a merchandise stand and looks at him and smiles. Road stop ga guide. That would be the largest ball of s s s seesaw. Sorry. Twine built by a single person. Who built this? This ball has the largest cir circum cir circumference of any of the great balls of twine, and it's still growing. Huh? I stand corrected. How is it still growing? Lean in, boys. We need a selfie with this world of wonder. Dallas and Sawyer put their arms around you and either and from from either side, smiling up at your phone. 
Uh, excited. You can pick your phone and snap the picture. Send me that one, would you? Me too. Now, where's the nearest food? Just around the corner to your left. Ma'am, you are my guardian angel. Oh, hush. You all laugh and walk in the direction of the diner. You walk into the local dinner, I mean diner, and the waitress immediately makes her way over to your group. Let me guess. It's another reused, reused person. Yep, I was right. I just... Welcome to Swine and Dine. She gives you an appro appraising look, taking in your new outfit. Aren't you so celeb? Are are y'all celebrating a special occasion today? No, just passing through. In that case, let me get y'all the best seat in the house. Did you do a cozy corner booth, and the three of you start to look through the menu? Do you think they have a uh, any twine themed food here? Like what? String cheese? Sir, string and twine aren't the same thing, I assume. Doesn't look like they're ta taking advantage of their cl of their claim to fame. Half an hour later, you roll a fork full of spaghetti into a ball and triumphantly show it to Sawyer and Dallas. Ta-da! Twine-themed food. Ta-da! Twine-themed food. You should sell that idea to the owner. They make thousands off the menu change. A twine food themed restaurant. What? You know what? I don't even care anymore. <sighs> Make makes more sense than than the table side Caesar salad. You just finished your meal when the waitress returns. What's the bill? Here you go, dar darling. She sets the steaming chocolate lava cake. Steaming chocolate lava cake down in front of me. Oh my goodness, that looks the that looks that looks amazing. I didn't order this. The waitress winks at you. It's on the house. Uh, oh oh oh. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> Share with the boys. Forget them. I'm keeping it myself. I deserved it. You grant it down and sorry and pull the chocolate closer, scooping up the large Oh my god. No fair. Now you're just torturing us. The boys groan as you eat the cake bite by the delicious bite. Yeah, they don't deserve my prize. Is this because I was dressing nice? Or did the waiters just think I'm cute? Gee, gee, I hope that gee, why doesn't that happen to me in real life? You know what? Forget it. I don't want to talk about it. After dinner, you head back to the car. What the heck? Let me sit by myself. This is we sat next to, next to Dallas. We're sitting next to Sawyer this time. You fall in, step beside Sawyer. Hello, where we're staying. Sel Selena, a bit an over an hour. That's a long day in the car. You're not wrong, but we're doing in. During the bulk today, so Dallas can have more time tomorrow with his mom. And it was just the two of us I was planning on spreading it out a little more, making it more of a holiday. That's a nice thought. Because if you still want to spend more time alone together, you could always come by my room tonight. And what will we do alone in your room? Sawyer flashes a brilliant smile, his hand brushing yours, and uh, okay, okay, no, 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 no. You reach the car and climb back into the finish, the last leg of the drive. 
Finally, you reach the hotel and Sawyer checks you all in. We'll meet back here tomorrow morning, bright and early. Sounds good. I'll be ready. As the boys head toward the elevator, you think back on the, your conversation from earlier in the evening. I could, straight, I could go straight up to my room, or I could spend the night with a special someone instead. Yeah, how about no to either of them? Turn in alone. That's the good way. Okay, that may I might have took it that a little too far. I'm sorry. On second thought, tomorrow is going to be a long day. I'd better get some rest. Yeah, that's right. Do it. Yeah, that's right. You have to your hotel room and fall asleep as soon as you as your head hits the pillow. You don't even see the room at all. You're back in the car at the crack of dawn. The next morning, you feel the mood grow more and more intense the closer you get. We'll be in Tulsa soon. I figure you can, you all can drop me off at the rodeo and then take the car. Daz gives a curt nod, but says nothing. His eyes are distant, lost in thought. Science falls as the Tulsa skyline appears on the horizon. This is Tulsa. Before you know it, you're weaving through the city streets. Sawyer stops the car outside the rodeo stadium. Dallas, I hope you've seen your mom is everything and you've been waiting for. Her. Call me if y'all run into any trouble. Thanks. Sawyer gets out and Dallas takes his place behind the wheel. You turn to him. Are you ready? Ready. Ooh, I know you. I'm sorry. Why can't we just go to the hospital? Instead of going to her house. Well, I get that he doesn't want to be seen because he's still a wanted criminal. Even though he didn't do anything. As Dallas turns off the f neighbor and turns off into a neighborhood, your phone buzzes and with another voicemail, you sigh and listen to it. Undo it. Anthony, when you get back, when you get, get a minute, call. Can you call me back? Kind of busy right now, Cliff. You look to Dallas, then a, the city slipping away behind you. Dallas navigates by memory, ignoring the map open on the back seat. Before long, Dallas pulls up outside a simple house. Else it's old and a bit run down, but it has a cheery welcome mat and faces of bright flowers in the windows. This is your home? <laughs> uh, sorry. Dallas nods and parks. Parks. He doesn't move, clinging to the steering wheel so tightly his knuckles turn white. Encourage him. No, you can take. You can do this, Dallas. I know you can. Dallas takes a deep, takes a breath, and lets go of the wheel. I can do this. You know this. He climbs out of the car, marching purposely toward the front door. He stops at the mat, crouching to retrieve the key, when... Dallas? Dallas, baby! The woman wraps her arms around Dallas, holding him tight as if she's afraid to let go. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I thought you were in the hospital. Did they call you? I told that hospital not to make a fuss. Wait a minute. She releases Dallas, wiping her hands... Her eyes then notices you for the first time. Didn't I teach you any manners? Introduce your friend. Oh, this is Anthony. Anthony, this is Mama. Abigail James. It's nice to meet you. So polite. Come, give me a hug, child. But I, before you can react, Abigail wraps you around the, wraps you in the warmest hug of your life. Dallas smiles sheepishly. Anthony's a friend, Mama. He's helped me stay out of trouble. Anyone who keeps my baby safe is welcome in my house. Now come inside. I'll get y'all some sweet tea. Tea? Really? Why does everyone want... How come every time you visit a house, it's always tea and crumpets and stuff? Okay, that doesn't... Okay, that probably happens in London, but I don't even know why, why I said that. <coughs> you sit in Abigail's comfortable living room. Glass of tea in your hands. Photos of Dallas and his brother on lying on the walls. Lying the walls. Why aren't you at the hospital, Mama? Because there were never any, any reason for me to be in there. Didn't you had a heart attack? 
I forgot to take my blood pressure pills and fainted at the church. At church, I was awake two minutes later, but they already called on the ambulance. The hospital said you had a bad fall. According to the to a nurse who's barely out of diapers, every fall is bad at my age. My age? Can you believe it? Honestly, the nurse is hijacked. And their manners. Too right. I ought to find out who his mother is and have a strong word. I was, I'm just so glad you're okay, Mama. I was worried. Oh, baby, I'm so happy to finally see you again, but... Are you sure you should be here? What if someone sees you? I can't have you go and have you back just to lose you into prison. I've been thinking about that, Mama, and it's time I face the charges against me. What do you mean? You're going to turn yourself in? Nah. I'm not confessing to something I didn't do. I'm going to meet Bone Crawford face to face and convince him to tell the truth. Bone Crawford. Without his false testimony, they ain't got nothing on me. I don't know, baby. It's been years since you saw him. You should take some time to find out out a blue about him before you go charging off. Yeah, I'm with your mom on this one. We don't want to confront him unprepared. What do you have in mind? I got your, your got your old yearbooks around here somewhere. I bet you could find something to use against Bone in one of those. Plus, you can see pictures of my baby in high school. Mama? That sounds intriguing. Find out more about Dallas this is past to help clear his name when you confront <sighs> yeah I gotta agree with my friend but as long as I'm not flirting or anything let's check out those books here they are you really had to you really had, to had those ready to go didn't you I don't know what you're talking about now I could only now I can only find senior year and freshman year we only need senior year, Mama. Oh, hush. Which one do you want to look at, Anthony? Mm -hmm. Let's see senior year. Let's stick with senior year. Thank you. Let's see. I have the, all the pages with Dallas marked. Seriously? Abigail look opens the book, of, book to a photo of Dallas beaming from the middle of a group of young men in wrestling uniforms. It's a nice outfit. <laughs> and so it begins. This was his high school team, the South Tulsa Stingrays. Okay, what? They were terrible. <laughs> I'll say they got a terrible name. <laughs> so what are you saying? So what you're saying is Dallas is better at wrestling steer than people. Hey, I always signed up because my best friend I because of my best friend I in Isaiah. He points out a skinny boy, boy in the front row. Y'all were closer than two peas in a pot. What happened to him? He went to Oklahoma State. Used to visit me every Sunday till he moved to New York. Abigail reaches over to cup Dallas's cheek. He always believed in you, baby. Dallas's smiles is tinged, ting with sadness as he looks at the face of his old friend. Oh, Anthony, you have to see this. She flicks through the book. Abigail opens to a page of class photos. One smile stands out amongst the others. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> you look ridiculous, Dallas. What's with the afro? <coughs> Okay, I shouldn't be laughing because I was born born with an afro too. And look where that's gone to. Gone as a gone as a fiddle. I could grow it back, but there's dandruff stuff. I don't wanna I don't wanna do that anymore. You know what I mean. <sighs> Mm. 
Maybe I should be right back. Well, anyway. The Dallas in the photo almost looks like a different person. His smile is effortlessly bright. His eyes wide with uh, and optimistic. I've never seen you so happy. You look so different here, so young and innocent. I guess this version of me, he thought he had a bright future ahead of him. He still does, Dallas. Abigail sighs, eyes lingering on the photo of her young son. You really were a good kid, Dallas. This is why we need to clear your name. Someone as, as good as you deserves to live free. Straight. So, what do we know about this boom guy? He was the quarterback on the football team. Of course, it's always football. Which basically made the boy a local celebrity. Dallas switches through pages until he finds the right photo. Of course, he looks shady. When I was a kid, I always thought I was going to grow up to be a hero. Seriously, that's his yearbook quote? Sounds familiar. What's it from? It says here, it's a quote from Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And it says he, w says he was on the student council. Yep, his pop made him run. Dallas switches the page and points out a photo of Boone with an older man. The family resembles his, obviously. Councilman Crawford swears in the, swears in the student council? That explains a lot. Corrupt cult. Well, corrupt councilman, corrupt son. Oh, Mr. Crawford ain't corrupt. He isn't? Nah, he's a pretty decent guy for a politician. He's just blind when it, when it comes to his son. So, Boone and his dad are close. That could, that could come in handy. When we, when we talk to him, Dow switches to the rest of the, his yearbook and closes it. I think that's the last of it. We've got we got a lot to go on. We're ready. Then we should go find him. And where can we find him in a place like this? Abigail sighs and squeezes Dallas's hand, taking a lingering look at her son. You finished that conversation a free man, you hear? Dallas wraps his mother in a fierce hug. I'll fix this, Mama. She looks to you, imploring. And you, Anthony, you keep my boy safe. I will, Abigail, I promise. That night, Daz drives you to a dive bar in the heart of the city. He charges inside with you, following a step behind. There he is. You follow Daz's gaze to the man at the bar. You and Daz approach him, taking a seat on either side of Boone. Boone? Holy crap, Dallas James? Boone's eyes wide in alarm as he reaches for his phone. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And what the and who the heck are you? Your worst I'm your worst nightmare. What does that mean? It means you're going to listen to Dallas or I'm gonna make you regret it. You better listen now. Boone looks you up and down with a doubtful eye, then glances at Dallas. Listen to you about what? I want you to take back back your statement against me. To tell the truth for once. I can't do that. And as far as I know, the man fleeing in the scene could have could have been you. It wasn't. And you know it. All all I did was date Alex after you after he dumped you. Okay. Let me ref let me hear that again. It wasn't and you know it. All I did was date Alex after he dumped you. So Dallas is gay? 
Well, oh, that explains a lot. All right. Bone folds his arms, his face stony. Alex didn't dump me. You broke us up. He's not listening. I have to find out a way to reach this guy. Maybe mentioning his student council experience could sway him. Didn't you learn to listen on the student council? What be being on the student council got to do with anything? That was years ago. And I spent those same years on the run, separated from my family, my friends. All because you told the police you saw me when you didn't. Admit it, Boone. You knew it wasn't Dallas running away from the, that liquor store. I, I saw someone running, but probably not Dallas. So you'll tell the police the truth? I can't do that. My dad... He's running for Congress next year. Can you imagine the fallout if I say I accuse someone of a robbery as a prank? Screw the fallout. This is my life. You don't understand. He's clearly, he clearly loves his dad a lot. Are you afraid of your father? Are you afraid your father will disown you for dam damaging his campaign? No, he never do that. It's just he thinks the world of he thinks the world of me. If he finds out what I did, it ch it change how he seems of me. Even if you were doing the right thing and owning up to what you did. One looks into his beer pondering this. He has this saying it takes a small man to admit his mistakes, a big man to a big man to own. That is a nice quote. I'm gonna keep that. And a brave man to face them. I'll take that quote too. Sounds like you have your answer. Boone smiles, then his shoulders sink. I don't know if he was talking about something like this though. Boone drinks the last of his beer, checks his watch, now ah, shoots a desperate look at you. One last chance. Don't go full Butch Cassidy on him. Boone, don't be like the bad guys in the movie. We Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Man, I love that movie. Always makes you cry like a baby. Though technically, Butch Cassidy was the bad guy in that movie. Good. Just be a good man, Boone. Like Paul Newman. Like Dallas. Boone hesitates then sighs. Alright, I'll go tell the police tomorrow and recant my testimony. And then, then I'll tell my dad what I've done. He's a good man. He'll make sure that all charges against you are dropped. Really? Just like that? Really, to be honest, I've thought about what I did to you a, a, you a lot of, over the years. But you never did anything about it? No, I wasn't brave enough, and I'm truly sorry for that. Why do I have a feeling he's trying to trick us? If he's not, then okay. But if he is, ugh! You see Dallas clutch his fists by his side. It's over, Dallas. You're free. Which means you shouldn't have to carry this anger with you any longer. Dallas gives you a long look, then he relaxes. You're right. Boone, you were, yeah, as a teenager. You might as well be, be now. But thank you for doing this. One thing right. He offers his hand to Boone. Boone takes it, collapsing with both hands. Thank you for that. Let's go, Anthony. He heard to join Dallas as he strides from the bar into the fresh air. He's not a free man yet, but it's the closest he's been in a long time. Long, long time. Later that night, you and Dallas meet up with Sawyer out at the hotel. You're filling Sawyer in on what went down that afternoon when. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Hello? Anthony, finally, we've been trying to get a hold of you all day. What is it this time? Sorry, Cliff, it's been kind of crazy over here, and I can't just drop everything to help out with ranch stuff. 
Fine, fine. We'll talk about that later. That's not why I'm calling. Did Sawyer hear the news? Uh, I don't think so. Here, let me put you on speaker. What's going on? I don't know. Your dad said he's, he has news. You hold your phone out so everyone can hear. Sawyer, my boy, I hope all... I hope all your rodeo prep has paid off, because you're gonna, you're about to go up against Hollis Knox. Hollis Knox? You lean closer to Dallas and whisper, "Who's Hollis Knox? The best rodeo cowboy of all time. If Sawyer's competing against him, he's gonna need all the luck he can get." Oh. Can Sawyer handle the competition at the National Finals Rodeo? Find out in the next chapter, which I'll do on Monday because I have work on Saturday, next Saturday. Oh man, that was a good, that was a good one. I'm sorry, I can't speak country. But anyway, um, we finally cleared his name. Hopefully it's okay. Anyway, um, I, hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. And if you want to get notified of all the videos I put up on my channel, go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. And I will see you all in the next video. I'll see you all, see you all later.